Hello and welcome back and let me explain to you exactly what you're going to get out of watching this video. First of all, I will be sharing with you my VOD review techniques, uh, things that I find very useful to improve when watching VODs. Secondly, I will be looking at a uh, number of games demonstrating the Tristana vs LeBlanc matchup, but the way that I look at these games from Rookie and uh, Nemesis and Faker and other pros, you can use the same framework to look at any matchup in the game. I will show you exactly how you can find the right VODs and exactly what to look for to improve all right in, in your matchup understanding and lastly we'll be doing a psychological breakdown of you the viewer that's right and uh, uh, what your learning patterns are what your strengths and weaknesses are and how you can go about improving uh, your ranked journey so whenever you play against any high cooldown mage uh, the goal on Tristana is always to continually trade you want to trade autos because the mage only has 55 AD right and you have 74 okay you also get fleet on your auto attacks um, so look at the enemy's keystone to decide how the matchup should be played in this case LeBlanc has electrocute so she wants to take a short trade and then not fight again whereas Nemesis should be chatting LeBlanc whenever her W is off cooldown he should be uh, on cooldown excuse me he should be chatting LeBlanc off the wave and trying to trade auto for auto okay and he's done a reasonable job of it um, so far Far. He's gotten some good trades and now is where you sort of level your W and you jump forward But you can see nemesis actually chooses to level Q now I'm not sure if that's because he felt uh, he felt like the wave was in a bad position And so he feels like he needs the extra attack speed to uh, crash the wave, right? Uh, but there was definitely an opportunity to jump forward there He chooses not to and the does a really good job here to actually pull the wave with her clone and make nemesis Be stuck in this very very awkward line. All right So nemesis is now in a predicament where look uh, if he tries to use his abilities to shove the wave There's actually a chance that LeBlanc can go on him and we saw right there a really big crucial mistake from LeBlanc uh, Using her W on the wave and not on nemesis her W is such a long cooldown ability all right and uh, she can never afford to use that as a movement spell. It has to be a damage spell. Whenever you play against a strong laner like Tristana, like Akshan, you know, whatever it is, Orianna, if you play against a strong laner, you cannot use your abilities on the wave. That is the first rule of thumb. If we use our abilities on the wave, we're going to lose. Um, so one thing you can actually look at uh, that I find really, really useful, guys, is if you just type into Google, you type in the Blanc lol, and you type in Tristana lol. And you just look at the cooldowns of the abilities. If you find yourself that you're losing a certain matchup, this is a great way to understand it. Here we can see that LeBlanc W is almost the same cooldown as our W, right? So it's 22 seconds on our W and 18 on LeBlanc's, um, LeBlanc's distortion. So as soon as we see LeBlanc use this spell, right? She, she uses her W forward like this. We now know we have 18 seconds where we can play extremely aggressive because we cannot be ganked. If the enemy jungler comes, how does LeBlanc close the distance? You know, she doesn't have her dash to actually set up uh, for the gank, and that's also the majority of her damage, right? Because she needs her W to proc the Q sigil to do the bonus damage. If she just has autos and Qs, she can't win the lane, okay? So as soon as we see this LeBlanc using her W like this, we should change the way we play, and we should play very, very aggressive um, and constantly look for auto E, auto E trades, or even just auto for auto, you know, things like that. We should be playing very, very, very aggressive, and we should feel comfortable walking up to the wave and actually crashing it because we know she has no cooldowns so uh, nemesis does exactly that he recognizes the lack of cooldowns that is his great um, awareness and he managed to crash the wave and now it's bouncing back into him now here he's thinking okay I have 500 gold I don't really have anything good to spend on okay so he decides to actually stick around and uh, push an extra wave and here we see a, another major mistake from the Leblanc we can straight away tell that the Leblanc is not a very strong player uh, just because if the enemy greeds their recall and uh, you can see them there. As soon as LeBlanc sees him use his ability on the wave, again, if LeBlanc did that thing where she went into Google and she looked up Tristana abilities, right? Like that's all you have to do. You just look up Tristana abilities, boom, you see Tristana's used E, what's the cooldown on it? 16 seconds, guys, it's massive cooldown. So by using this E on the wave, Nemesis exposes himself to a potential all-in. What LeBlanc should do right now is cancel her recall immediately and just run at him and just try to kill him. She can try to preemptively E flash and then follow his flash or his W with her W and she can get the kill because Nemesis has no damage. Your E is all of your damage early game on Tristana. It provides you that W reset. So um, it's a very, very risky play here and a better player would cancel his base and punish Nemesis for this mistake. Um, but uh, she doesn't. She ends up uh, recalling and TPing back in. And what should LeBlanc do here, guys? LeBlanc should push, pull this wave with her W. She should tank that wave right now. She should be Wing through the wave, tanking the wave, canceling Nemesis's recall, right? Forcing Nemesis to recall as far as possible. And then actually... Um, 
also having a freeze, right? And then potentially she can get a jungle gank set up with the with the chain, whatever it is. So basically, from just watching the first three minutes of this uh, of this game, we can actually tell that this LeBlanc is not a very high level player. Okay, so even though Nemesis is playing well, of course Nemesis is a great player. This might not be the best game to look at um, if you're looking to improve in the LeBlanc versus um, LeBlanc versus um, Tristana matchup because he's just not playing to his limits, and that's just a fact. Here we go. This is the game. Okay, so this is the game that Nemesis played. Um, it is LeBlanc versus Tristana. He's playing against Omega Spadur. Okay, and this guy has been master tier 100 LP for the past three years. Okay, he's not improved. He's not climbed. This is just a master tier player, and he doesn't even play LeBlanc. If you look at his champions, LeBlanc is... Where is LeBlanc? I can't even see LeBlanc. LeBlanc is number 25. He's got two games played on LeBlanc this season. He's got... You know, one game played on LeBlanc the previous season, the previous year, you know, two games played. So he doesn't he doesn't even play LeBlanc. Okay, so when you're thinking about matchups, when you're thinking about uh, what game should I actually watch to learn how to play this matchup, Tristana versus LeBlanc, this is probably not a good example because Nemesis is not being punished by this player how it should how it should be. This matchup is not going how it should if both players are equal skill level. Okay, um, and what you can do right is whenever you look at you look at different matchups, don't just look at one game. Don't just think that this pro, uh, yes, he's a pro, he's extremely knowledgeable, Nemesis is extremely skilled. I watch Nemesis stream all the time. I love him to death. I think there's a lot of value to get out of watching Nemesis, but clearly his champion mastery of Tristana is not that high, and his opponent's champion mastery is not that high in this game. So pretty much after three minutes, I would actually stop watching this game. If I'm looking for laning phase, if I'm looking to improve my laning on Tristana, I would just stop watching because I can see that the players are just not playing to their potential. All right, and uh, they're missing opportunities, and I can't really learn from uh, learn from that. What you can do instead, let's just look at the first three levels. Okay, let's look at some other vods. Now the way that you can do this, guys, you can find any vod by just going to YouTube. Okay, you just go to YouTube like this. And you just type in uh, Challenger Tristana versus LeBlanc. That's it. That's, that's it. You just type that in and you find one of the VODs. Uh, I would put filters, you know, this year because obviously mid lane changed. The, the terrain changes, I think, changed the way that you trade. Uh, so you just kind of look at uh, you look at season 14 VODs. It doesn't matter what patch it is because Tristana hasn't really been changed. Yes, the items got, you know, buffed, things like that. But the Doran's items have been the same. Your laning phase is going to look exactly the same. And most matchup understanding comes from the lane, right? It's like a hard matchup is hard because you get fisted in lane, you know, um, that's that's the case for most matchups. So if you can if you can navigate through laning phase, every matchup becomes the same. Mid to late game, it just becomes playing you know uh, mid lane on side lane or playing a an AD carry in team fights or whatever it is. So uh, I looked at a couple of wards like this. I found them in this exact way. Uh, we looked at a fake award. Let's have a look at a fake award the way that he plays, uh, for instance. Um, so Faker level one walks up. He knows that he has fleet. He knows he has bone plating. That's another mistake from Nemesis, right? Against LeBlanc, you should always, always, um, always take bone plating because that denies a whole combo. Because LeBlanc's uh, LeBlanc's trade pattern is auto W auto electrocute, right? And your bone plating is going to proc on the W on the auto and the electrocute, so you get the full minus 90 damage on bone plating against LeBlanc. It is really, really high value rune. You should always take it in this matchup. Um, so pretty much as soon as you see that Nemesis doesn't take bone plating, I think he took conditioning. Maybe um, I'm not sure what rune he actually took, but uh, Nemesis loves conditioning. So he's more of a late game player. But uh, for me personally, I flipped the game level two. I flipped the game level three. So when I watch Nemesis play Tristana, it doesn't. It doesn't feel right, you know. It, it doesn't. When I try to play like that, it feels like I'm not doing enough in the game. Um, so I look at another player's vod. That's the beauty of YouTube, guys. You can watch at so many vods. You can get so many different people's perspective, and then choose what you enjoy. You know, copy the person that that feels right to you. Um, take something away from the person that that is like the most similar to your own playstyle. Now, see what we can see. Faker, uh, you know, he's playing passive on the first wave. Uh, he's doing a pretty good job of uh, not taking too much damage, but always trading back. You know, whenever Faker plays Tristana here, we can see that he's always trading damage back, and he's always trying to trade the autos. Like we said, right? That's what we said at the start of the VOD review. We said you need to trade autos because your auto literally does 20 more damage. Okay, so trading autos is really favorable for you. Plus, if you count the fleet, you know, that's a you know 15, 20 HP fleet. Uh, heal, so you, you get another 20 damage back. So, and you can see this. This is something that Nemesis never does. As soon as you hit level two, why skill your E? Why skill your your Q? Sorry, if you have an opportunity to jump. Let's let's have a look at the exact same trade pattern. This is the great thing about VOD review is you just look at multiple VODs and you just look at level one to level three. So here, Nemesis is about to level up to, to two, right? He's about to level up to two. The Blanc is already low. 
just jump forward, you know. Uh, obviously, he doesn't have his E here, so uh, uh, he needs to wait for his E. But once his E is back up, and LeBlanc is still not level 2, you can see LeBlanc is not level 2, and we know that she has to walk forward to last hit this minion. We know that. You know, we can drop this minion. Just drop this minion, or you can jump in a way that you can get this minion with your W, A, O, E, and E auto her. All we want to do, guys, is just get an E auto on LeBlanc, because we know that this cannot be a gank timer. This is a really safe time for us to put our W and cooldown, because when do we ward? We always ward mid at 2.15, right, to 2.30. Because we get ganked anywhere from 2.30 till, you know, whenever. You, you don't know when you're going to get ganked. You don't know if he's going to 3-camp you or 4-camp you or 5-camp you. But from t before 2.30, you're completely safe. Because if you look at your minimap here, uh, Nemesis minimap, we can see that Viego's only done 2 camps. He hasn't even finished his second camp right now. So the enemy jungler would also be on his second camp. So this is a really safe time to just jump forward, put our jump on cooldown, and get free damage. It is free damage. We're level 2 to level 1. And we know she has to walk up for the creep. So here, instead of leveling... His Q, if he just leveled his W, he would have been able to punish LeBlanc, all right? And potentially, if she actually greeted for this creep and he jumped before she, you know, autoed, he would also land the W slow. So he would land the W slow, E, one auto, and two stacks on the E, right? Because of the W. So he would do pretty much 300 damage to this LeBlanc for free. It's completely won the game, level two, and then the rest of it doesn't matter. You're, you're, you've already won, you know? You've done two good trades, and you've won the lane. And that is exactly what Faker does. Faker is up a level, and he will jump in straight away, okay? He's up level two, he just jumps in. Even though it's just one auto E, he can see, look, his Talia has only done two camps. And the enemy jungler has also only done two camps. Even if you don't know where the enemy jungler has started, nobody ganks mid level two. It's impossible. Nobody does it in season 14. So these are the kind of windows where you level up to level two on Tristana, where you should just take the jump. Just take the jump and play aggressive. This is a LeBlanc lane that you have to punish for being a high cooldown champion. So whenever you get an opportunity to trade an auto E or W auto E, as long as she doesn't have chain, the only downside of jumping like that is if you get chained on minion aggro, that's a problem, okay? But um, obviously, if she's not level 3, then it's a great trade. We can see Faker wards the Raptors, and he continues spam auto in the wave. That's really, really important. Just continuously spam auto in the wave, but he's never using his E on the wave, and he's never putting himself in a position to be traded when his auto attacks on cooldown. That's really, really important here, guys. So you can see Faker auto attacked, and then moved in, and he's not actually autoing here. Because, one, he's expecting LeBlanc to potentially walk up to this creep or use W to get the creeps. And he wants to make sure that as soon as she dashes on him, he only has a brief window before she dashes backwards. He wants to get the E auto off, right? And he does get the E auto off, which is fantastic. And he gets another good trade, okay? And obviously, he also had the uh, the bone plating there. That's why he feels like he's comfortable forcing. That's another benefit of his rune setup con compared to Nemesis. And again, he's hit level 3. He's looking for windows. He knows LeBlanc is not level 3. So I'm sure that in his mind, he is looking for a jump, potentially. If there was a jump, he was looking for it, you know. Finally, LeBlanc does hit level 3, so he's not jumping forward. And uh, he just keeps autoing the wave. He keeps autoing the wave nonstop. He looks for trades. He plays very good. So you see how he's playing on his wave. He's playing very far up. He's inviting the LeBlanc trades, okay, because he knows that as long as LeBlanc doesn't get push on him, um, he's always going to win because he's going to spam out of the wave and he's going to get some HP back. He's going to get fleet back. So he wants to continue trading with this auto E. He wants to continue uh, the trades. He's not playing passive. He's not just playing super far back, last hitting. That's not what Tristana does. That's not her strength as a champion. Tristana's strength is her volatility, her ability to go in and out, to get solo kills, to be safe from ganks because once you reset your W, you get ganked, you can jump away. Here, Faker is thinking about contributing to his jungler, which is something that Nemesis did a great job of as well. Uh, you saw that in, in the Nemesis VOD too, uh, when he had nothing left to do. Uh, he took some trades, and uh, then he saw that his jungler was in a bit of trouble, and he ended up uh, actually moving to his jungler. So this is definitely something that Nemesis does well, and Faker does well, and you should do in your Tristana games, right? You should move towards the play, because you have your W. Um, you can, you're very mobile. Uh, you can get very, very easy kills in skirmishes. So that's definitely something you should consider. Obviously, it's a lot easier to kill the jungler um, coming out of fog rather than kill your laner. But this is, again, something that Faker does. Faker tries to bait out skill shots. He's using his movement because he knows that LeBlanc's cooldowns, again, Faker, Faker doesn't need to do this, but we can do this every time. LeBlanc, lol, boom. Let's look at her E cooldown. What is LeBlanc's E cooldown? If she uses her E, but she still has her other spells, again, 14 seconds. So as soon as Faker sees that E, he knows for the next 14 seconds, he can play super aggressive, and he's going to win the trade. Once again, he has bone plating. He's happy to face tank trades and be on, the, you know, be in the driver's seat um, because he's playing Tristana. 
So this is how you play Tristana, in my opinion. This is how you should play Tristana. This is good Tristana gameplay. You're constantly trading your health by you're constantly playing around the other guy's cooldowns and you're pushing the wave at the same time. But you're not just focused on pushing the wave because if you push the wave and the other guy pushes the wave, well, you can both move to the play and there's really no advantage for you. Also, you're opening yourself up to a lot of uh, trading windows. One good thing about Faker right here, he did the trick that we know, right? When you're when you're eing the wave on Tristana and there's a wave, you're tanking a full wave, you should never move, stand still. Because if you move, the creeps will drag too far forward and then your E is only going to AoE the melee creeps. But if you just stand still, then this creep will stay exactly where it is and your your bomb explosion is going to hit all uh, all the minions around it, or at least the majority here. I think one of the one of the range creeps is not going to hit. So that's you know just seeing Faker do that shows me that he has a very good understanding of how to play the champion. He's very good uh, champion mastery on Tristana. You know, but but the crucial part is guys, whenever Faker has W, he jumps forward. Okay, because this is how you play the matchup. If you run fleet. This is how you play the matchup, and this is something that you need to do every single time. This is why it's so favored for Tristana, is because your one ability counters two of LeBlanc abilities, okay? You just need to use your W after you've been chained to buffer the stun. Not only are you buffering the stun, but you're also countering her W too. So you're closing the distance on her W2, and you're buffering the stun, and if she doesn't dash away, if she doesn't use her ult here, then she you, you also get the proc on your E, you get the slow, you get the W reset, so she you're basically using your W to dodge her E, okay, you're do, using it to dodge her E, you're using it to chase her W2, and to force her R1, okay, you're, you're using your W to get three spells in return. This is how you play the lane, and you can only play this lane like this if you're willing to jump forward, okay? If you're playing with confidence. This is how you min-max on Tristana in the lane. Um, let's go back to the Nemesis Ward and just have a look at the way he um, he approaches this matchup. It's obviously the same matchup, and uh, he does a roam here. Uh, doesn't doesn't find anything very, very unsuccessful, and here he bases on... Uh, let me just quickly have a look. So he bases on six... 650, I think, 650 gold. So whenever you base, yeah, it's a good idea to buy a HP pot. I think playing no regen is really, really hard. It's really unforgiving. And that's why you see Nemesis actually buy the, the, the refill and the coal. But in reality, if you're playing solo you guys, don't ever buy a coal on Tristana, okay? Your champion could do so much early game. Why would you hinder yourself and make yourself weaker during your strongest points, during you know uh, the parts of the game where you're extremely mobile, you have prior, you can one-shot people. Why would you hinder that by buying coal? You know, in competitive, you might buy coal because nothing happens, but in solo queue, there is so much stuff that's happening all around the map. So buying coal is just you know, it's a very underwhelming decision, and uh, you should always buy out. So in my opinion here, you should always spend 650. All right, so we can either buy boots, uh, you know, boots, dagger, HP pot. Like we need to assess, do we need regen? I think that we do against LeBlanc because she can get those trades on us. So if we do need regen, we should buy boots, dagger, HP pot, or we should buy double dagger, HP pot, or we can buy a longsword dagger. If we really feel like we can ego her and we can go for an all-in, we don't need the regen. It's up to you. Um, but you should definitely never, ever buy coal and never, ever buy magic mantle. Okay, don't ever buy defensive or scaling items if you're winning. All right, or if you're going even. Just buy damage items because if you buy magic mantle here and then... You know, you, you end up getting jumped on by Rengar. It doesn't do anything. You've just wasted 450. It doesn't help you kill Rengar. Okay, it doesn't help you survive against Rengar. A magic battle is useless. Same thing with the Colt. You know, yes, the Colt gives you a bit of AD, but if you just buy a dagger longsword, you've actually spent more of your money. You know, or if you buy double dagger HP pot, you've ticked the regen box. You have some regen. Yes, you're, you're down a little bit. Of course, HP pot is worse than a refillable, but you still have some regen, and now you're up a full item. You know, she has a dark seal, but you have double dagger. Okay, so I think itemization in the early game really matters for how much you can push your limits. So again, Nemesis comes back to lane. Whenever we saw Faker, whenever we saw LeBlanc dash on Faker, what did Faker do? He would immediately dash back on LeBlanc. But Nemesis, he's not even looking for trades on LeBlanc. You know, he does he does go for the occasional E auto, but in general, he's just looking to thin the wave. He's he's very focused on sort of the fundamentals of the wave. There's a big wave pushing into me, I need to thin it out before I can trade. Um, that was a bullshit trade. I'll give you that one. That that should not land on Nemesis. But here, what what do we know, guys, from watching the wiki, from 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 just googling LeBlanc ability? She's used a W. What's the cooldown? It's 18 seconds. We have our spell up in seven seconds, so we need to use that window right now, where our Q backs, our Q comes back off cooldown, and LeBlanc is still on W cooldown to just jump forward. It doesn't matter if we're down a level. 
Okay, even if it, obviously, ideally, what do we need to do? We need to pop our potion to give ourselves as much HP as possible. We need to try and get level 5 if we can. And then she's on cooldown. She's on CD. So we need to try and get all the advantages we can, like HP, regen, XP, all these advantages. And then as soon as our cooldown's back up, we jump forward. That should be your, your game plan on Tristana. If you know the other guy has no escape, you just jump forward, but you try to give yourself as much of a, you know, um, a buffer as you can. So here, he's not popping his potions early enough. Um, let's see, let's see, actually. I think it does a pretty good job here, but the problem is now we actually we actually missed our window. So our window is right here. So what we needed to do here is we needed to actually jump. So we need to auto this creep and actually jump right now. So we should jump right now, use our W, all right, to give ourselves the level up because right now our Q's already been up for a couple of seconds. So now her W cooldown is maybe like five, four, four, five seconds, six seconds away. So we, we don't know the exact cooldown on her W, but we're close to missing the window to trade. So we need to force a trade while we have an advantage. So W right now, our W AOE is going to get this creep, so we don't waste time actually autoing the creep. And then we eat her, uh, we e her and uh, we do a couple auto attacks and uh, we back off once we know her W is on cooldown and we play safe. Okay, So that's like abusing cooldowns. That is champion mastery on Tristana. That is how you can win games in solo queue reliably every single time without being a pro player, without having the, the macro understanding the nemesis does. Uh, but he misses this window. He misses this window because he, you know, he's not He's not hyper-focused on the trading. He's focused on other things in the game. And uh, you know, again, he uses his E to last hit there. This is like a prime example of Nemesis versus, uh, versus somebody like Rookie. You know, This is why Nemesis is an analytical player compared to Rookie being an uh, uh, intuitive player. Rookie would never, I would never use my E on this creep. I would never. I would always, I know that if I don't use my E here and I don't have my Q, I will miss one creep here. Okay. You just need to auto this guy and then start autoing this guy and let the tower kill the other creep that's it or you know you, you will always lose one creep to this tower but you can get two here from just autos you can get two and the most important thing excuse me is that our e is not going to be all in cooldown when we start walking up with this wave okay when we start walking up here we can actually trade leblanc right because we have our e if we had our e there we could just w and e forward and uh, she will dash away, and she would do no damage to us. Remember, if LeBlanc dashes away from you, it's really high value because her dash is doing no damage. And that is the highest damage ability she has in her kit. So that's what you want. You know, she's tanking our wave, and but we don't have our E because we've, we've prioritized getting one extra range creep for 14 gold. You know, and that's just the difference in playstyle. And that's why Nemesis gets punished there, right here. LeBlanc punishes him. This master tier hard stuck 100 OP player is, is playing this matchup better than Nemesis is right now. The specific matchup, you know, not mid lane in general, but just the interaction between LeBlanc and Tristana, punishing the cooldowns, spacing, tethering, you know, using creeps as opportunities to trade. So pretty much... Like that's that's kind of my take. So after watching you know these first six levels, if I'm trying to improve my first list, first six levels on Tristana, I would not use this vod as uh, as gospel, you know, because clearly there's just been a lot of mistakes made from both sides. And instead, what I would do again is I would just look at other vods. I would look at other vods. Let's let's look at a, another example, not the Faker one. We can have a look at how Faker plays up to six, but I don't think too much happens. Um, so let's look at let's look at rookie for example. Okay, rookie, rookie is me. All right, this is how I play Tristana, and this is in my opinion the most beautiful way to play, the most exciting way to play it. And this keeps it interesting, keeps it fresh. Um, you know, rookie constantly trades. Rookie is the opposite of Nemesis. All right, he's the opposite on that uh, on that intuitive spectrum. Now you can see, Rookie, at the very start of the game, he's running at LeBlanc. Why? Why does he run at LeBlanc? Even if LeBlanc has an electrocute here, Rookie always runs at LeBlanc because... Actually, what, what does Rookie take? What, what does he take? Yeah, he has bone plating. So he knows that he cannot lose a trade with bone plating against LeBlanc. It's just not possible. Like, he has that matchup understanding, so he knows that he wants to... If he doesn't use his bone plating for the first 60 seconds of the game, then that's, you know almost the full cooldown of bone planning wasted. You know, if you don't use your flash for 10 minutes, then you could have flashed twice. Vice versa, if you don't use your bone planning level one, then by the time level two rolls around, you could have a second wave of bone planning. You know, you could have already won a trade and had another one because it's it's refreshing. It's it's coming off cooldown. So you know, and it's great. Rookie does the couple of autos on the wave. He does the E on on uh on uh, LeBlanc. Obviously this is not the greatest trade. We don't want this. You, ideally as rookie here you want an E auto. Whenever you play Tristana you always want to get that auto off. Um, to increase your E damage, but you know he, he doesn't get phased by that. It's all good. 
Like he tried to go for an aggressive trade, and he didn't get it. And look at that. Yeah, he's he's always trading auto for auto, auto for Q. He's always abusing the fact that, like we said, he has 74 AD and LeBlanc has 55. And even if he trades auto for LeBlanc Q, it's still a winning trade because guess what? He's going to get another fleet proc, right? He's going to get some health back. So he's actually hyper min-maxing this matchup. He's using his strengths. He understands his strengths and he's forcing his advantage. He's not just playing passively and just playing to scale, playing to reset. He's playing to kill the other guy. He's playing to kill your gal. He's not respecting him at all. And in my opinion, this is how you should be playing Tristana. If you're the average solo queue player in, you know, platinum, diamond, emerald, gold, whatever, you can kill your laner. Why would you settle for a small CS lead when you can kill your lane on Tristana? Your champion is capable of doing that. And you can get a bigger lead and you will be able to carry games that you normally can't carry. And we can see here, again, what happened when Nemesis got traded like this in his VOD? He would walk backwards, right? He would walk backwards and he would maybe get one auto E and then he would run away. Rookie is running forward. He's running forward to get that extra auto. He doesn't care about taking aggro. He knows that every single auto he gets increases his E damage. And overall, even if he takes a bit more mean aggro, it's still worth it for him. Right? No, Rookie is not afraid to trade. This is how I play Tristan as well. You know, Maybe this is wrong. Maybe this is unstable for some people. But in my opinion, um, this is what proper Tristana gameplay looks like. You flip the game at every point because you have so many tools to outplay. You have so many tools to set up ganks, to escape, you know, to get the kill, to sustain... Like, this is what your champion's all about. Rookie is not afraid, even though the execution isn't perfect. Here, for example, remember what we said about Faker not auto-attacking when he was afraid that he could get traded? Rookie makes that mistake right here. He actually auto-attacks and then puts himself in a vulnerable position, right, after auto-attacking. Whereas, for what Faker did was he would have, after that auto, he would actually walk backwards. He wouldn't walk to the left. But Rookie walked to the left, and now he's on auto attack cooldown. Or maybe he just didn't click. Uh, he just didn't click Yigao fast enough, and Yigao gets a nice trade, right? Yigao gets a trade where he doesn't take a single order from Rookie. Rookie doesn't get the flea proc, and uh, it's very winning for Yigao. So you know they're both exchanging blows. It's it's definitely not a not an open, um, no, but not an open and shut case. It's an even playing field, and these are the kind of games where you can you can learn the most, in my opinion. Watching somebody who's very very skilled with Tristana, who's constantly flipping the games, constantly looking for angles. Um, look at that, guys. Rookie doesn't care. He does not care. He will he will jump forward, all right, and he will trade one for one. This is what Tristana does. Okay, the, the LeBlanc W's into you and chains you. You need to jump into her, all right. You need to start doing damage. Trade it back. Don't be afraid to flip the game. Okay, this is Tristan. You're playing a flip champ, so please do flip the game. So I love that from Rookie. He, he does end up dying, and the wave is not great for him. It is pushing into uh, Yigao, so Rookie ended up winning, uh, ended up losing a couple extra creeps there, which is very unfortunate. But it's totally fine. Look, he's back to his old tricks. He's back to mid lane. What is he going to do? He's going to look for trades. Every single time, he just walks up, gets one cheeky auto, one cheeky E auto, backs away. But he keeps doing it. He doesn't get phased. He never, you can see, if we had a heat map of where Rookie has stood in this lane relative to his creeps, it would always be past halfway. There's almost never in this in this lane, almost never has Rookie ever stood behind his range creeps, ever. He's always standing in front of his creeps, and he's playing against a good player. All right, and he's not getting punished because this is the correct playstyle. This is how you get the most out of Tristana. You don't need to respect your opponent because your champion is just stronger at this point in the game. You are just stronger, so so abuse it. Yeah, obviously Rookie's just waiting for his Q cooldown. That's why he's playing respectfully there. You know, he's not trading. Um, he saw the Talon was near him, so he just placed a you know a cheeky ward, and now he's just waiting for his E, waiting for his Q cooldown to make sure he gets a good trade uh, on your Gal, not forcing it, being patient only when he has to. Again, just really great tethering from both, uh, you know, both mids. Both of them are spacing very well, and there we see it again, right, guys? Rookie buffers the W, buffers the E. He buffers the, the LeBlanc E2 and the LeBlanc W2, all right, and gets in for some extra orders. Again, when we watch Nemesis, what do we see? It was Nemesis jumping away. It, it was Nemesis using his spells on the wave and then jumping away from LeBlanc, using his E under tower to last hit, and now he's Wing away from LeBlanc. All right, he's not thinking in advance, how does LeBlanc's trade look like and how can he even win the trade? Look, he's using his E on the wave, using his W to jump away. This is not how you win the game on Tristana against LeBlanc. All right, but it works for Nemesis. This is just this is just the player he is. You know, his strength is the his strength is just the, you know, getting 100 CS at 10 minutes every single time. Rookie playing like this probably doesn't get 100 CS at 10 minutes every single game. There's probably some games where Rookie goes 0-3. 
all right, at 10 minutes, and he has like 60 CS, okay? But there's also going to be games where Rookie is so fed that an unwinnable game is actually winnable because Rookie is the main character, because Rookie is getting these kind of big leads in the early game. And it's just about you, like, you know, understanding wh wh who are you like as a player, you know? Wh what do you enjoy playing like? Do you enjoy having big leads and flipping the game? Do you enjoy the emotional roller coaster, Or do you just want to farm and just be a consistent player? Look at Rookie! This is a Tristana player using a short jump for the slow, which also dodges the Talon W. Like, this is just such high value W usage from Rookie. He's not afraid of dying because he knows that he has his Flash still. He has his Lilia to help him there. All right, so he's actually thinking two steps forward. He's thinking, how can we kill the Talon here? You know, if you're on Tristana in this game, all right, and you see this, you see this Talon running at you, vaulting over the wall. I can guarantee you guys, the majority of you are Wing to your tower here. All right, you're not Wing on Talon, but but Rookie does, and this is what makes it so enjoyable to watch because this is this is the playing the champion to its limits. This is how you should aim to play the game. You know, he's trying to get the most out of every single trade, out of every single skirmish, and you can because you have so many tools. You know, he never stops auto attacking the wave, keeps life stealing off the, off the wave. Flashes forward. Rookie just doesn't care, man. You know, this this is just beautiful gameplay. And l keep in mind, the only reason this is possible is, guess what? Rookie bought a recurve bow. All right? He didn't buy refillable potion. Okay? He didn't buy magic mantle. He didn't buy cult. He bought the most offensive stats he could possibly get. And then he's flipping the game because he is strong. All right? He knows he has an advantage in items. And if this works, he's going to get massive leads. He's going to be able to explode the game. He's going to be able to get the mid tower very early and impact the side lanes. And no matter what teammates you have, if you play like Rookie does here, you can win any game, in any draft, in any comp, from any deficit, and you know, as a team. Because he's playing with confidence. He knows what his champion wants to do. And regardless if it works or if it doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't let one mistake phase him. You know, getting solo killed level one or trading one for one, he doesn't let it phase him. You know, he's still trading one for one. Now here, obviously, the mistake from Rookie is he should just buffer the jump, right? Um, uh, he should just buffer the uh, the Rakan jump here. Like he's, the LeBlanc is already dead, so if he just buffers the the jump backwards, uh, he stays alive and LeBlanc dies there, and uh, he gets the one for one. So that's a little bit of a mechanical mistake, but again, it doesn't it doesn't stop Rookie um, even making one small error. He'll still play the exact same way. He went back to base. He bought a longsword, he bought a refill, he bought boosts. I don't mind that. I think once you see that your opponent has um, once you see that your opponent has refillable and you have no potions left, it is important that you do buy refillable just to match it. Otherwise you do just uh, get chunked out and then it's kind of hard to all in your enemy. But once again, guess what Rookie does, guys? LeBlanc's back to lane. As soon as she's in range of Rookie, he sees that she's going for a creep, he's blind jumping. All right, he's just jumping on her straight away. He's he's not he knows that his the LeBlanc W cooldown is her main trading tool, and his W and her her W is around the same cooldown. So pre level six, if you just trade your W on Tristana for LeBlanc's W one, you can't get ganked because she can't set up the gank because she can't close the distance. And two, she can't actually trade you with auto Q auto. You know, if she trades you with auto Q auto and you just trade her with auto E auto, you win. Okay, so if the Blanc doesn't have W, she cannot win a trade, she can't play for push, and uh, the only thing you have to do is just make sure you have a ward down and you have a side to lean on. Okay, so this is pretty much the pre-6 Tristana checklist. Have a side to lean on, get LeBlanc W off cooldown, and then just walk forward and trade autos. Walk forward and trade autos. Walk forward and trade auto E for, you know, for her auto Q. It's totally fine. I love the way Rookie's playing it. He's always willing to trade, and whenever she jumps forward, he never clicks away. This is really important, guys. When the Blanc jumps at you, don't feel terrified, okay? She just wants to get in, do a little bit of damage, and get out. And you need to click on her before she dashes backwards, right? Because you're a range champ. Your auto can be cancelled if uh, the opponent dashes out of range. Yeah, and uh, he pretty much never lets go, <laughs> you know? This is... Like, this is just beautiful Tristana gameplay, in my opinion. You know, the rookie has a small level lead. He's playing aggressive. Rakan comes. Guess what, guys? We can buffer him. Okay? Uh, that was really... That was crazy from rookie. This was actually kind of insane that he tried to... He basically tried to sidestep it instead of buffering it, which is a little bit... Like, this is insane what rookie did here. I think this was pure luck. I do think this is a bit psychotic. From this position, you should just WA um, because you can see that the talent is there as well. So you should just kind of... Uh, dash away instead of trying to kill Rakan, but Rookie goes for the one for one. You know, this is just the classic Tristana thing. That's the classic Tristana special. You got three people coming mid and you're still getting the one for one. 
Right, that's the beautiful thing about this champion. Now he should have died there, absolutely. Don't get me wrong, that should be a one for one. And uh, he does end up taking a bad recall, so it's almost the same as a one for one, right? Because LeBlanc ends up crashing that tower, uh, crashing that wave into the tower, and uh, Rookie loses the majority of it. But um, yeah, if you just play with confidence on Tristana, you can push your limits so much more than if you play reserved. I don't know if it's like a mentality thing for me as well, you know. And, and look at that as well, just beautiful from Rookie. He sees that the tower is shooting the minion, and as the tower shoots the minion, he autos the LeBlanc. And he's always able to get one single auto off, walk away. One single auto off, walk away without taking the aggro. Okay, so just because your opponent is under tower doesn't mean that you can't harass him. You can harass him, especially with LeBlanc. Um, you just need to do one auto, walk away, one auto, walk away. Guess what, guys? Your gal is under tower? Not for long. You know? That was very unlucky for Rookie. He actually didn't get um, didn't get the kill. It's a bit unfortunate. It was a good effort, but look at that. That's why we love Tristana. That's why you can do these things on Tristana, guys. You can jump forward. You can flip a kill, and maybe you get this kill. Maybe you don't, but you can always get away from the gank as long as you get that EW reset, right? You can always get away from the gank. Boom. You just buffer it. It's so easy to buffer, guys. You can never get ganked, and you're winning the game for your team by drawing resources mid. You're drawing people to come mid. If you don't die to them... It's really good. Even if you drop a couple of CS, it's really, really good. All right, because you're drawing map pressure, you're wasting their time. Now, look, as much as we did bash on Nemesis at the start of this video, uh, he did end up carrying this game 13 and 1, uh, completely dominating the mid to late game. So his playstyle works for him. But when you're looking to learn matchups and improve sort of in the laning phase, just look at different perspectives, right? Look at a multiple, um, uh, a bigger sample size of games, maybe three or four, and see, okay, this works for this side. And then uh, this guy did this well. And just try and try and take all of it away, assess, and then just decide what's best for you, right? Just accept that you're a different player, right? You have your own unique play style. You don't have to directly copy someone to win. And let me explain what I mean by the analytical and intuitive concept. Um, I'd say every player in league is divided into two categories, okay? On a, on a broad spectrum, right? And uh, you could be 80% analytical and 20% intuitive, or you could be, you know, vice versa. You could be 60, 40, 30, 70, whatever it is. Uh, we all fall somewhere on the spectrum of, you know, this is the highly intuitive player, right? This is intuitive, um, and this is analytical, okay? And uh, every single league player falls into one of these two categories uh, to some degree. When you watch Nemesis play, uh, and this is probably the middle, right? This is like 50, 50, 50, I'd say. Now, another way you can simplify it is that analytics, very highly analytical people rely on macro to win, okay? And then very highly intuitive people rely on micro to win. But we all use a bit of both. It's just about which one is your strength and which one is kind of your weakness, all right? Um, so when I think of Nemesis, I think of... Macro, when I watch his Tristana play, he plays an excellent macro game. He has great fundamentals. He wins through wave management. He wins through correct side laning, you know, TPing behind, things like that. But he does not win by min-maxing his champion's mechanics. He does not win by flipping the game level three and winning because, you know, he executes better mechanically. He does not He does not let the game come down to a quote-unquote flip, but it's not really a flip if you have a very good matchup understanding and it's a good way to accelerate your lead in the early games. Now, this is Nemesis, okay, right here, this is Nemesis, and let's put him at, you know, 80-20. This is Nemesis Tristana, all right? 80%, the game that we watched, Nemesis won that through 80% macro, um, and then 20% micro. That is what I what I saw from Nemesis. Now, if we watch at a, a Tristana OTP or a different player who maybe mains Tristana or puts more Tristana hours, you'll see that that player will fall mostly on the intuitive event of the... Um, on the uh so that's was it rookie rookie was it yeah it was rookie right it was rookie on uh on nip so rookie the way that he was winning was 75 was 80 20 but in the other direction okay his 80 20 rookie's 80 20 was 80 percent micro and 20 percent macro okay so rookie falls on the other end of the spectrum and now you have to ask well but you have to be honest with yourself. Well, where am I on the spectrum? You know, personally, when I play Tristana, I rely a lot on micro. I really do. Like, I have a very good understanding of the champion. I've played thousands, 
or at least a thousand games of it and i do win my lane through through micro if i go to autopilot mode on tristana i will flip the game level three i will flip the game level four i will flip the game level one and that's okay you know that is your strength as a player and you should stick to that you shouldn't try to change your identity just because somebody else finds success with you know playing passively or playing for the late game or playing to scale that's the beautiful thing about league of legends there's multiple ways to play the game and uh you know like coach cutter says your league journey your each game that you play it's an open canvas all right you're the painter you make your own painting and it, it doesn't have to be a copy of somebody else's what works for you might not work for someone else so now let's say where you are on the spectrum now most players who play champions like tristana yasuo yon you know silas champions with extremely high skill ceilings and high outplay potentials and high um you know kill thresholds where you can find angles where you know you're playing oriana you can't jump on that guy and kill him but you're playing tristana you can't you know you could cheese any bush and if somebody walks into you you one shot them so you have to think about where do you fall on the spectrum you know and maybe the average player here will be something like uh, i would say uh, let's let's put it this is you okay this is you all right so let's say that you are a 70 30 player all right so you fall 70 percent micro and 30 percent macro okay this is you now let's actually talk about what do we mean by 70-30 player, right? What does this actually mean to our win rate, to our games played? So when I say 70-30, what I actually mean is that you win, all right, 70% of your games through micro, right? And then you win your other 30% of games through macro. So let's say that your win rate is 50%. Right, you've played 100 games, you won 50 out of 100. That would mean that we won 35 out of 70 games through micro, and we won 15 out of 30 games through macro. So let's say we watch a bunch of Nemesis VODs, uh, we spend 10, 20 hours improving, and we improve our overall gameplay by 33%. Okay, so let's say that we focus on the macro because that is what Dem Nemesis demonstrates when, when playing Tristana and we improve our gameplay by 33%. That means that our strength in terms of macro, the amount of games that we will win percentage-wise in terms of macro is going to be 20 out of 30. All right, so now our win rate has gone up from um, 50% to 55 Okay, so we are now a better player thanks to Nemesis, thanks to the time that we've spent watching his VODs and we're going to win more games. We're going to start climbing. That's great. OK, but let's take the reverse of that. All right. Let's let's see if we actually focus on somebody who can provide us more value in the micro, somebody who can help us with Tristana matchup understanding, Tristana limits, Tristana uh, champion mastery. Right. So if we actually focus on, you know, challenges, Tristana boards or somebody who's a little bit more aggressive and we prove our micro by the same 33 percent, you know, it goes up to 46.5 out of um, out of out of 70 okay so we've we've actually improved our win rate by 11.5 percent so our win rate goes from 50 to 61.5 percent now this is our win rate now by focusing on the micro because we've realized that we are a very intuitive player and this is our strength right so if you focus on your strengths your win rate will go up exponentially compared to if you focus on your weaknesses your win rate will still go up regardless if you're trying to watch vods and get better at the game of course you're going to become a better player um that there's no doubt about it but it's about sort of the time that you put in and the value that you get out of it so think about yourself be really honest look at your vods you know have a look uh, am i winning the game through decision making or am i winning the game through just killing people just you know, killing structures and killing champions and jumping on people. Is that the part of the game that I enjoy? And if it is, then I need to find a content creator or I need to find some content on YouTube that suits my playstyle, right? That helps me develop myself as a player in the direction that is my strength.